Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hello, listeners. Today is International Women's Day, and we wanted to host a conversation about the day because, well, it's complicated. My name is Kathy Mazak, and today I am chatting with our coach, Rocio Caballero Gil. And we want to have just a candid, we hope thoughtful chat about International Women's Day, what it means to focus on women specifically in academia, and how this company, our company, has changed over the last five years with respect to developing our programs through a lens of gender equity and inclusion. Rocio shares her work developing a professional organization called Geo Latinas. We talk about the difference between including and welcoming, and we really kind of take a minute to think about what we want for you listeners on this International Women's Day. We hope you enjoy this episode. Yay! Okay, so... <laughs> I am here today with Rocio caballero and we are talking about International Women's Day. So we were discussing like in our company about whether we wanted to do a special podcast episode for International Women's Day, which is March 8th, the day that you should be hearing this episode or the day this episode drops. And it was interesting. We had like a pretty nuanced conversation about it. So I wanted to dig into that and kind of bring that out to all the podcast listeners. So to start, like, there's a couple of things that, you know, are appealing to me about International Women's Day. I like that it has kind of a history rooted in collective action and protest. I also kind of like that it's something that's celebrated more internationally than in the U.S. Like, I think, you know, being from the U.S. myself, like, I tend to kind of focus on U.S. holidays. And now that I've lived in Puerto Rico, also to a lesser extent, because I still am really learning all the Puerto Rican holidays. <laughs> like I had the big ones. So. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, like what's important, like in different cultures and different places. So I wanted to talk to you about this because you, you know, maybe have a history with or ideas or have heard about International Women's Day a little more because you grew up in Peru. I don't know. So let's just talk about it. Like mm -hmm. what, what would you say like is appealing to the idea of International Women's Day for you, Rocio? Thank you, Kathy, for, for all of that intro into thinking of this day in particular. To be quite honest, I, I have a, a history that has evolved with this day because it has not always been. And even now, it's, it's really hard for me to think of it as a celebration because, yeah. you know, while other like you mentioned, seeing this international component and the celebration of other places. And to me, I just see the struggle of other places being yeah. almost at the center and the one of the reasons I guess that I struggle with this day the most is because you know one can see the almost like the movement forward and some advancements and some things and yet I still can see like I'm typically I'm a person that sees you know like the brighter side the you know the silver lining and it's like almost we're getting there but in this particular case I almost feel like I turn, you know, to the other side of the coin and it's more like, yeah, but we still are not quite there yet. And yeah, mm -hmm. there are many other things to see and to do in order to get there. And I feel maybe that's part of my own personal struggle because I'm used to that more positive, you know, thoughtful process. And in this case, I can see more of the other side than what we need. But I still like this day as an opportunity to reflect. So to me, over time, you know, through that story of like, oh, I, I don't see it like that and this and that, it has now evolved into this 
it's a day of reflection. Yeah. I do like to have those, you know, schedule in my week every <laughs> every week. And so this is an even, it's almost like a bigger day of reflection. And it's not just about the thinking of, of things, but it's more like the assessment of the action that has happened in the previous, you know, week, months, years. And clearly one person cannot do everything. And so part of my reflection is, you know, how am I helping a little bit with everything that everyone else is doing, right? Or how am yeah. I not helping? Because every time one does something unintentionally, you can be almost like hurting something else or someone else. Mm-hmm. And so that idea of thinking, okay, what is the unintended consequence of this thing that I'm doing that could be great for this particular demographic? And that's where part of the struggle comes back. You know, how are we, how am I? in some ways, reinforcing this binary idea of gender, how in some ways is it helping, but also not helping, right? So I I do like this idea of when I reflect, seeing it as a movement, a reigniting of the movement of Mm -hmm. how do we overcome the struggles that we see internationally come together to be represented in this day, and also, you know, the counterparts. So I guess I do enjoy the day in some ways because it brings all of this thought process and reflection, but I don't see it as the way, you know, I see it in the media and the way I see it in social and even in the social spaces, right? So, yeah, but that's kind of where I am with this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we're, I want to get into some of what you brought up. So in terms of International Women's Day, I think that if you Google it or if you go to the website that is internationalwomensday.com or .org, <laughs> you'll find that like the purpose or the stated purpose is about equity and equality and you know ha- women having access to the same kinds of resources that men do. But you rightfully point out, right, that the emphasis on Women's Day, there's two things that make me go, hmm, like you said, like, cause me to reflect. And one is this like kind of reinforcing this false gender binary that like all things are about Mm -hmm. this binary, you know, Mm -hmm. like this versus that, which I think is limiting thinking. And I think won't lead to equity and justice eventually, right? Like, like if we continue to think inside these binaries always, then we never get to justice, you know, so there's that part of it. And so I guess I want to talk about women's spaces inside of academia and these kind of gendered spaces, I guess, because I think in the fight for equality and equity and justice and diversity and all of these things, like, you know, there is something wonderful about being in community with women. And there's also always this other thing, which is this reinforcing of the gender binary. So I wonder, like, if you have reflections about that, and I am going to ask you about, you know, your co-founder, of a group called Geo Latinas, which is about promoting Latinas inside of the geosciences. So I would love to hear how you kind of deal with these issues inside of your own organization and how you invite people in and that kind of thing. There's so much to talk about all of that. I know. Um, (laughs) Let's let's break it down. So just to start, I guess we we do need the space, right, to be with others in a communal way and talk about our struggles, but also celebrate our victories. And in the back of my mind, from all of the equity work that I and I struggle with the word equality because that's kind sure. of a dream yep. and it's great, but you know, like we're not there, and I don't even think of it as that. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, we need the space for you know our own particular identities to feel like they belong in that space. And yet, when you think of equity work you have to involve the ones that are outside those spaces. And mm-hmm. so even within Geo Latinas, and you know, I'll talk a little bit this more deeply later, but in every space that we can have for our own specific identities, to, you know, based on the needs that we have, I always think that we need to somehow connect it to, yes, you know, how does this fit in with the bigger picture of moving forward and doing things? How do we involve those outside of that bubble? And there's a time and a place, right? So sometimes you just can and you don't need to because you need that space to just be. And other times it's, okay, now how do you work together? And so the the same kind of works with when I'm doing things with your Latinas or any other spaces. I have a chronic illness. So, you know, there's also space for that. And then women with chronic illnesses 
the Needler space as well. So when it comes to Geo Latinas, you know, the whole idea was to create this space. It was born organically <laughs> and for, you know, and over time, really, like sometime in 2017, the two other co-founders, Clara Rodriguez and Adriana Crisostomo Figueroa, they were able to connect somewhere in the UK for, through a conference. And Clara, um, she's very excited about these things. She got very excited about seeing Adriana. She was like, I want to scream it out to the world. And so there was that moment of that we've all experienced at some point, but she was like, okay, we need to do something. So fast forward a few months to sometime in you know, almost a year, 2018, then there's this idea, okay, like let's create the space to shout it out to the world. There are Latinas in the geosciences and the earth science and planetary sciences that are doing great mm -hmm. things. And so that's how Her Latinas looked to their account and some of the movements started forming. That's how I got to join the, the group that we were trying to figure out what it was. <laughs> and yeah. then, in, you know, after some exchanges in 2019, we were like, okay, this is the organization. And so as, you know, each of us joined and everybody else who wanted to be part of it joined, we all carried our own needs and our own identities that were not just women in GEO, that were not just Latina in GEO. And so... Part of the beauty, the, the amazingness of Geo Latinas is that we try to honor this. And from my perspective, we also think of, okay, what's the role and how do we create change with the people outside? How do we involve them? So, hmm. so now Geo Latinas primarily wants to empower, inspire, and really promote Latinas in Geo. We want to be inclusive. We welcome other people, anyone who wants to join, but being welcoming and being inclusive are different things. And so there's work mm. to do coming, you know, from a Latina who came from South America, like in my case. And we have this, you know, this way of seeing the world that, you know, maybe we were raised with a binary in the gender that we were raised mm -hmm. with. Women are supposed to do this or that and men can do this and that and others cannot. And then also, you know, the race component, you know, if you're light, mm -hmm. if you're lighter skin, white presenting. So all of these things come into play. And when it comes to Latinas, it's like, okay, how do we include everybody? How do we still promote women? And so I think now we're at a point where we keep on working, how to include others, how to continue growing, how to make that space shine and have women who are Latina and Geo belong. And, and we're not just into the geosciences. We all, we, you know, the whole organization also promotes Latinas in planetary sciences hmm. and in either field, whatever way you, you look at it, we do it because we are not represented, not fully represented in any space, in any country that right. we look at, you know, it's an international organization and we still, we're not represented. And so part of the idea, I think Geo Latinas was born from a need. And now we are using the numbers of percentages of how we are not represented, how we are not in the strategic places to continue making the change that we want to see in different right. places. So, right. So that's something to keep in mind. I enjoy this work. I think mm -hmm. that it's needed. And part of the reason that I, that I enjoy it is because it tries to level the playing field in terms of, you know, if we're talking of International Women's Day, there is certainly more advancement for a specific demographic within that women mm -hmm. component, right? So white women would have a higher representation. Right. And in particular in the geosciences, we are really bad to say like almost what two percent of women of yeah. color are mm -hmm. represented in that field. So that's a really, really bad. And this is interesting because the geosciences, you know, they encompass the study of the earth, the atmosphere, the oceans, everything that impacts society. And that society is not represented in that field. And mm. so it, it's almost like it should be even more of a push to really address the needs that we have. And it's just not what's happening right now. So, yeah. So now I just forgot if there was part of the question that I'm not addressing. That's, no, that's great. <laughs> I mean, I think like a few takeaways that I have from what you just said, like one is this emphasis on reflection and that these kind of bringing together of people inside of spaces is a process that continues to happen and get refined over time. And it's a reflective process. I would love to hear you say a little bit more about the difference between like welcoming and inclusion, because I think that that's something that is part of this idea of like when we're trying to create spaces that foster relationships, that foster the visibility of underrepresented people in fields 
where they are so important to the actual field itself, making these decisions about who's welcome and who's included, I think are really important decisions to make. And they're ongoing decisions. What I'm hearing you say is that there's like a beginning of the the idea of Hey Latinas was born at a certain moment. And then it's continued to like change and evolve and grow over the course of years. And that you kind of recognize that it's not a static group and the space you're creating isn't static either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And at least that's my approach. In Hey Latinas, we try to make sure that everybody knows that everyone who wants to be in charge of something, be a leader we believe we're all leaders and we have that potential, even if you have no clue what that is. The idea is that we help each other figure that out, what it is for us and how we use that in our field, in our lives. So it is an evolving type of organization. But I think that's because of the people that we have there right now, as we yeah. get new people who, you know, it's tied to our backgrounds. You mm-hmm. know, if I come from, a country where I am used to a patriarchal view of this is how it's done. Yeah. You come in with this. And so in, in this organization, in this community, you learn, you can open your eyes and be like, Oh, actually (laughs) it could be this other way. Oh yeah. This is actually a possibility. I could be this. I could do that if I wanted to. And these are the things that I may need. And so it's a little bit of learning, right? Being someone who comes from this background. Now, Someone who, you know, and and we can get into this way into the the difference that I see between welcoming and inclusive and being inclusive is that, you know, what if it's someone who is not part of the main demographic, right? In Philippines, but if it's a a white male coming into the space, really wanting to help, really wanting to do things. There's also a process and a bit of learning in terms of what to do and how to do within the organization and, and then take that outside of the organization itself. And right. so to me, being welcoming is, and we try and we say this, you know, like everyone can join as long as you support our mission. So it's evolving, yes. And at the same time, we center it back to this is our main goal. We want to empower, yeah. we want to inspire and promote Latinas and Geo. Anyone can be part of it. And in fact, sometimes I talk to colleagues who are not Latinas and Geo, that you know, it could be uh it could be anyone. And it's more like come in, see what we do, see how we function. And take that because they come and say, no, maybe I can do this for my own particular needs and demographics. I'm like, yes, you can take this and reuse it and, you know, like give us credit however you think you can. And Mm -hmm. at the same time, we're not about, you know, you come in and this is is our stuff and you don't get to go anywhere else, Right. right? So part of the welcoming is saying, we open the doors, come in. Here's our Google Drive. You can take anything you want. (laughs) That's there. Just give us credit because we want to make sure that people are recognized for the labor. Right. And then at the same time, the the inclusivity part comes almost like next to it, attached to it, but it's not the same as opening the doors and saying anyone can come in. That is not, to me, that's not inclusion, right? Having Mm. the means to support those people who we are welcoming is inclusion. Having a way to have them see, feel, know, you know, their expertise or their values, anything is valued. That is inclusion. Um, so it's beyond the pat on the back, you did a great job, but actually recognizing and having them through their own process feel like they belong, even if they're not part of the Latinas and Geo. That mm-hmm. to me is like, that's inclusion, right? Yeah. And ideally, that's what we want to see in our workplaces that are not all going to be Latinas and Geo. How do I, as a Latina and Geo, go to a university and feel like I'm actually part of it and that I can contribute mm. meaningfully and that I am appreciative for that. And I'm also valued, not just financially, but in other ways. And so it's almost like we're trying to recreate in our organization how to do it in a way that we see we would love to have others do it for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like modeling that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's hard because, you know, if you're a company, it's, these are the things that kind of have to follow right and you read the handbook and you go in and you practice if you don't get it at first but then you you're there when you're uh, an organization that's trying to meet you where you are welcoming for where you come from and learn together through a process then there's a little bit more clunkiness in terms of how do we get on board with being inclusive you know yeah. because i learned that you know if this is the way things are done it's a different process that takes a little bit more time takes a little bit more conversations and even self reflection and self-inspection because yeah 
we are evolving over time. So I enjoy it. I know it's a lot of work and it's hard. And thankfully, we have more than just one person <laughs> yeah, to help yeah. with this growth and learning process. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really appreciate hearing that kind of like, again, like a nuanced perspective on on the development of your organization and of how it links right to this idea of spaces that we're trying to create and that they're not just like, this is a woman's space, you know, (laughs) and and they're like reinforcing that kind of, it has its own, all of its own biases, you know, (laughs) when, when you do that kind of, you know, delineation only by gender, right. Or only by gender thought of in a binary way. Yeah, yeah. And and we have to recognize that, you know, we have different needs. And because of our intersecting identities, those needs are going to change and the experiences that we bring are going to be different. And being such a large international organization, we have all of that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, in my mind are always I'm always thinking, how are we unintentionally leaving out our Afro Latinas or right. people who are not necessarily fitting in the picture that most and, and in fact even the word latina is a controversial thing to sure. use in this organization because that's not you know like i fought it forever and then i in the u.s i was like okay fine or use that as opposed to something else <laughs> um uh-huh. but we don't define ourselves as latinas and where we come from it's you know it's right. it's by the country and even smaller you could say so it's a learning process and it's a growing process that i i enjoy and i think that that's the beauty of it because we're finding mm-hmm. our way in, in our case, in the geosciences and also in the world and how we do things. We know that we are not represented just by numbers in our fields, wherever we are, no matter yeah. what country we're talking about. We know that a lot of the movement that comes with and the celebrating of this special day, March 8th, has had a, an impact and a good benefit for a particular demographic, not for all of us. And so the question right. is, how do we advocate for change and continue working when it's both, yay, we are almost 50%, but yay, no, we are not, we're 2%. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, like, <laughs> how, how do you not let that thing drag you down? Thinking of the action piece, the reflection yeah. piece, the moving forward piece. Yeah. And I think that's a really good question to leave people with. Like, if if we wanted to kind of think about like a, a path of reflection on International Women's Day, which I think this conversation makes me think is a good way to go, you know, thinking about some questions that we might encourage you all as listeners to think about are, you know, like what is, how are you going to decide how you face this big gap that needs to be, you know, that needs to be bridged? So how are you going to go about, you know, making positive change for your own community, for people around you? And for yourself without getting like drowned in, in despair. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and then, and then like, how are you going to continue to create spaces of inclusion where at the same time you're promoting that these gaps get closed or that these gaps become, these gaps become smaller with the, the idea that like, all of academia will be better when that happens and the knowledge we create will be more in line with what communities need when we have more representation of the people who are most affected, you know, by our academic work. When we have those people, you know, there in the academy represented. So I think those are things that I would leave our podcasters to noodle on, as I like to say. What would, is there anything you would like to kind of leave for our listeners today? Two things that come to mind right away are refocus or reinspect the need. You know, Mm. the need is to me what made your Latinas be born. The need of, you know, that we have are the things that help us almost figure out, you know, our path forward. So in doing this work for in the communities and not leaving other out and closing the gap, center on the need. And then also as we center on that need and what really is at stake, then we We have to almost look out around and say, what is the unintended consequence of me focusing on this need and addressing this need? Mm -hmm. So I think those two together are what help, at least my reflections. And for this day or for anything else, what I keep coming back to, I want to do more of this because that's really what helps to continue doing the work, to continue resting to do the work and all the things that come with that. Yeah. 
or not doing because that's important too. <laughs> yes, the doing and the not doing. Rocio, yeah. thank you so much for taking time to talk about International Women's Day with us and to give your perspective. And okay, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now. <laughs>